laser run. I am all caught up on my editing. I have the night to myself, so it's the perfect night for some photography. The problem being that it is the absolute worst type of weather you could possibly have for a landscape photographer. It is beautiful outside. The skies are blue, and there's not a cloud in the sky, and everybody tells you it's a beautiful day, but as a photographer, you're just bummed. You're depressed because there's no interest. There's no drama. And Nick is all about the drama, but, um, but at the same time, I want to do some photography today. I have the night to myself, so I need to make the most of it. So I'm determined to go out and try to make a photograph today, or three. I've been seeing this a lot in myself lately, and maybe some of you can identify with this, but I've been turning into a total light snob. I only go out when the light is amazing. Like, you know, it takes amazing light to even be worth Nick's time. And I feel like maybe that's a crutch that I'm falling on. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna try to find some photographs here in my local area, which makes it even harder because it's my local area and I'm not super inspired by my area. So I live in Eastern Washington here, kind of on the edge of the Palouse. And uh, so we have lots of rolling hills right now. Uh, it's springtime and the, the crops, the wheat crops are starting to get tall and lush looking. And they can really make for some beautiful photographs when that sun gets nice and low and casts shadows across the fields. So that's what I'm looking for. We're gonna be driving some back roads and looking for some areas that I can uh, really you know, get those cast shadows over the rolling hills. So that's what we're looking for. Wish me luck. So I think we may have found our first location. Check it out. So, probably don't need my whole bag, but we'll grab it anyways. So we've got lots of, um, lots of wheat fields here in eastern Washington, and along with those wheat fields, we end up having uh, access roads to for the tractors and harvesters to get up into the hills and the fields. So you can see we got this winding road here, and I think that's going to make for a good shot. Granted, our sky is not the best. It's very empty and sad, but as long as we're shooting kind of with the sun or with side light, I think we'll be able to get enough saturation in the sky to make something work. So, little thing that I'm excited about right now is I have these deadly spikes that I had made for my Fizol tripod. And uh, they're really nice for getting a good grip when you're on dirt or mud or sand or anything like that. It's kind of a bummer that we showed up when we did because the, the shadow line here, the shadow line is just past the road, which is a really big bummer. I wanted a little bit of light spilling across this. We're literally like 10 minutes too late. I'm gonna take the shot anyway. So we just took some bracketed shots there. Man, that's not at all what I wanted. Bummer, okay. Guess we're gonna have to go to the next spot. <clears throat> well, that sucks. We're literally about 10 minutes too late. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. But, you know, it's still early. There's not, you know, the light is still pretty blue and uh, not a lot of saturation yet. So we're gonna keep going up the road. I know where there's a, a vineyard, which I think will be pretty cool because uh, I think the wheat is getting tall around it now and, and you've got a little bit of an overlook, so should be kind of cool, I think. Let's go see if we can make an image there. Um, on this first shot, I'm really not needing to bracket too much because when we look at my histogram, I still have a little bit of room. So the entire scene is fitting inside of one frame, so I do not need to bracket. I'm shooting an F14, ISO 100, and then shutter speed gets to be whatever it wants to be. Also, I'm going to turn off 
image stabilization because I do not need it. I'm on a tripod. So we'll try this again. Gonna zoom in here and manually focus. Right there. Stop down to F16, a little more depth of field. Take the shot. And the histogram looks good. I can even go a little brighter. And if I do blow out those highlights, the blinkies are gonna let me know. So we're good to go with that exposure. I'm gonna shoot several different compositions, some zooming in as far as I can, and just focusing on the layers of, you know, you have these vineyards and then you have the wheat fields below, beyond. It's really kind of unique. It looks very um, Sicily, I guess, very Italian to have all the vineyards and then rolling hills. Um, it's kind of one of the unique uh, characteristics of this location, of this area here. When I shoot panoramas, I try to get my tripod nice and level. Um, and then I bring up the, the level inside my camera, the gyroscope thingamajiggy. <laughs> That's the technical term. And then I kind of do a test sweep and see how level it stays when I pan it back and forth. Notice I, I'm in vertical orientation here. And that way I get more megapixels when I, <clears throat> when I stitch it all together. And I get less distortion because the lens distorts less doing it this way. So I'm just going to start at one side and pan it over. I'm going to try to overlap about a third and then just keep going until I get the full pano. There, and then we come away with this image. I think it's time to keep driving, guys. Uh, we've still got a ways until sunset, so we're going to go see if we can find another good vantage point to get some rolling hills. Because I really think that the, the less the less of the sky that we include today, the better our photos are going to be. So we're going to go try to find a spot where um, we can include more ground, less sky, because the sky sucks. So let's go try to find that. Day two. One of two things is going to happen. It's either going to get hazy and it's going to get really flat or there's going to be just enough cloud cover for there to be some good light tonight. I was not excited about the photos that we got yesterday, so we're going to go out today and hope for some decent light. Um, it's either going to get hazy or it's going to be awesome, so we will see. Um, also going to do some scouting on this location, so let's go see what we can find. So I think uh, we found our location. Uh, Steptoe Butte is a gorgeous place if you've never been here. It's basically this huge butte. Uh, it's like a mountain in the middle of the Palouse, where down below you have this sweeping vista of all the rolling hills of the Palouse. And, you know, we've had tons of cloud cover here. It's been uh, pretty much gobbled up, but it looks like we have just the tiniest gap on the horizon. And it doesn't take much to, to start casting some light on these hills. So we're set up, just kind of waiting for, waiting for um, that light to pop through. One of the things that I'm noticing way over on the horizon there is there's all of these, um, the, basically the farmers working the, the fields and all the dust that's getting stirred up from it. And it's, it's being all backlit and it's just really, really gorgeous. So that's one of the things I'm looking for compositionally, trying to find a shot up here. <clears throat> it's really tough um, having this huge vista in front of you and then trying to figure out where to point your camera. Because if we go to the top, we have 360 degrees where we can look and there's not an obvious shot. But there are some like little winding streams and stuff that um, there's several of them. It's just like these little irrigation ditches going through the fields and that makes for a nice shot. So uh, when the light is right, I'm, I'm taking that shot. And then those backlit, uh, those backlit um, tractors 
in the background with the dust getting stirred up is really, really pretty. So that's what we're gonna do. Gonna set the camera down back here and get to work because I think it's about to happen. And it's tough because there where it's backlit, we're shooting right into the sun. I'm doing a two shot bracket, just making sure I get the entire dynamic range. And then I'm gonna take another shot where I cover the, le the, cover the sun with my hand again to kind of kill a little bit of that glare that's happening. But yeah, sun is going to poke out. This is gonna get really pretty. It means that all of this is going to light up. So I'm trying to work as quick as I can, having a, cause this light's not gonna last forever. All right, so now we are going to uh, try to get down off of Steptoe Butte and actually use, well, either Steptoe Butte or one of these trees here for my sunset shot. I think we're gonna get some really nice color tonight. <clears throat> and the thing about being on top of this big vista, um, when you're up here, you, you don't have any kind of foreground elements or anything. So it makes your sunset shots like just big sky and then like tiny little ground out in the distance. And it doesn't make for a very strong shot. But if you can go down and get some kind of foreground element to put against that beautiful sky, then you got something. So there's this tree here that I came down and got a shot of earlier, but now I'm going to break hike down here real quick and uh, and get a shot of it kind of silhouetted against that sky. I think it'll be really pretty. So let's give this a try. Uh, got some good light happening behind us here. Okay, so... Gonna change out the 70 to 200 for the 16 to 35. Okay, and never have a lens cloth when I need one. I know that my lens is dusty and shooting right into the sun just makes it even worse. Lens cloth. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Let's hike down here. Not the nicest stuff to hike in, in shorts. <laughs> this, this vegetation here that I'm walking through is very pokey and my shorts are getting it. But man, look at that. It's gonna be beautiful. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, while the sun's still up, is I want to put that sun right behind that tree. And, uh, and it'll kind of draw the eye to it. We'll try that first. Yeah, gorgeous. This is what Nick's talking about. These last five minutes of every day, maybe 10 minutes, are my favorite. This is when you get the good stuff. So, lowering the tripod a little bit. I'm going for a dead center composition on this one. Got my highlight alert on. Want to make sure that I'm not overexposing any of those beautiful, beautiful uh, highlights. The sky is just gorgeous right now and it's only going to get better. <sighs> so I'm going to bust out several compositions here. Um, I'm just doing a two-shot bracket for the sake of speed. 
I'm putting them two and a half stops part, apart. One nice bright one to get detail in the foreground. And then a darker one to make sure that I'm getting all those highlights. Shoot a F11 ISO 100 at one fifth of a second and one twenty fifth of a second. I'm gonna do a a uh, vertical shot here. That sky is just gorgeous. This tree is perfect. This is such a nice tree for this beautiful tree <laughs> and i turned into a tree connoisseur i think there's there's photog photogenic trees and then there's non-photogenic trees and i think we've got a photogenic one here so i feel like i've nailed that shot um man the colors are getting good and the nice part about being up high like this is the sun is still up and we're getting those excellent colors. I love it. I love it, love it. Now, I'm going to do one where uh, I can, uh, the, tree, the sun is just poking around the tree, but I'm gonna wait till it's really low on the horizon that way it's not creating just tons and tons of lens flare. That's when you can get the the star, the sun stars that are not harsh and like creating all kinds of lens flare is when it's like shooting through all of that atmospheric dust and it ends up working in those situations. Just because the uh, it's just it's shining through so much stuff that doesn't have the power that it did another composition over here from the side i'm gonna do this one with the sun just kind of poking through these trees these uh bushes in the foreground stop down at f16 give this a try it's pretty cool come a little further over ah there's no trail here and i've got stickers in my socks but it'll be worth it right it's always worth it. I can put on new socks later. This will actually call for a better vertical shot, I think. Yeah, I think a vertical, vertical composition will work better on this one. Because the, the sun is so close to that tree that, uh, that it's not balancing it out very well. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna get close to that tree and and get all of that color, silhouette that tree against all that color. So, gotta lower my tripod again. <laughs> Holding a GoPro as I do this is an interesting experience. So in order to silhouette a tree like this, this tree is not huge. It's like, I don't know, it's, 15 feet tall or something. It's not like a giant oak tree or anything. So in order to really silhouette it against the sky, I gotta get kinda low and kneel down in stickers and then shoot nice and wide. Get a little bit further away. Gonna go horizontal because a lot of the color is kind of off to the side there. So we'll try to get as much of that in the shot as we can. Very cool. Man, this is definitely going to be the shot of the trip. Because man, that sky is just gorgeous. Shooting F11, it's all, by the time I focus on the tree there, it's all just infinity away on my lens. I'm shooting at 16 millimeters, so I'm shooting wide, which means that focusing to infinity pretty much makes everything in focus. I don't have to try very hard to get enough depth of field. Maybe let's go ahead and scoop back even further and go even wider with this particular shot. 
but I'm not going to hike up the hill because then we'll lose the we'll lose the uh, tree against the against the horizon there. We want to keep the tree above the horizon so it's being silhouetted. Now we have this trail that's kind of leading to the tree. That's kind of cool. Yeah, this trail is actually really cool. We're going to shoot vertical and bring it more into the shot. And it's not a very obvious trail, but it's just kind of a, a lightening of the, of the vegetation. It's just a little brighter. And it's really working. Let me show you what we're doing. So you see there we got got the trail there, the darker exposure and then the medium exposure. And you can see this trail leads up to that tree. Beautiful. Ah! I just love it when a plan comes together. I'm going to man, look at that color. Look at that color. Oh my goodness. My goodness gracious. This is what Nick, makes Nick happy right here. Color like this puts Nick in a good mood for a long time. <laughs> Just made my weekend. Ah, beautiful. I'm so inspired, I'm going to bust out a quick panorama. What do you think of that? So, I'm going to get my tripod as level as I can manage. I have a leveling tripod where I can flip it upside down, but we're just gonna do a quick one. So I'm going to start in the middle and get my inner level showing me green, and then just quickly sweep across it rattle it off and the only reason I'm doing this is just to exaggerate the wideness because all of these trendle tendrils of the sunset are leading right to that tree and it should make for a really wide but awesome shot there's coyotes in the background they sound too much like wolves I think that's the thing is coyotes sound a little bit like a wolf and I don't really want to meet a wolf when I'm by myself. But yeah, so coyotes are creepy. Man, this is beautiful though. We got so lucky, guys. Now I'm just going to keep shooting all the way through this awesome color. Using this leading line now. We'll go up and do one more silhouette up close. Can't do enough. When you got color, you gotta use it. And, cause you never know like which, which shot you're going to like best. So it's best to just pretend like you don't already have the shot. <clears throat> and now my exposure has changed to one eighth of a second for my middle one. And then the last one is, three seconds not a bad way to spend an evening driving around so okay so I'm about oh 45 minutes from home or so to get here to step to Butte and um, because I teach workshops here in the Palouse I do a little bit of scouting and try to get a feel for uh, where the wheat crops 
are going to be uh, tall at the time of the tour and you know just checking stuff like that and so I drive around and I listen to audiobooks and sip on my coffee and and I like it it's not a bad way to spend an, an, a weekend some people watch TV but I like doing this awesome so um, we'll quickly run through the photos from this trip thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next photo trip Bye.